In this tutorial, you will learn how to correctly set up analog send effects with your RME interface. Unlike insert effects, which, as the name suggests, are inserted directly into the signal path, send effects remain outside of the audio path and are typically used to add effects to a sound while leaving the original signal untouched. The clear benefit is that you can run multiple sounds through the same effect. Most common send effects are reverbs, delays or choruses. But of course, you can get creative with all sorts of effects. To create a stereo send effect in Total Mix FX, we need an analog stereo output channel from the RME interface, which will transmit our dry signal to the stereo input of the hardware effect. On a traditional mixing console, this would be called an auxiliary send or aux send. After the processing is done, the wet signal will be sent back from the hardware effect to one of the stereo inputs of the RME interface. Traditionally, this is called a return channel. Let's begin the installation by connecting analog outputs 5 and 6 of the Fireface UCX to the stereo input of the hardware effect. Next, we take the stereo output of the Zen Delay and plug it into analog inputs 5 and 6 of the UCX. In order to avoid phasing, make sure that the effect is set to 100% wet. Once this is done, we can open up Total Mix FX. Notice that I created a channel layout beforehand. This allows me to hide all the channels that I don't need in this particular session. If you want to learn more about channel layouts, click on the link in the upper right corner. In Total Mix FX, we can mix and route our session hassle-free with no latency. On the top row, all available input channels of the UCX are shown. Note that the input channel 5 and 6 is the return channel from the hardware effect. Therefore, the process signal coming from the hardware effect will arrive here. Sounds from your DAW or your computer will show up in the software playback channels. At the bottom row, we have all outputs of the UCX at our fingertips. Remember that outputs in RME interfaces are far more than just conventional hardwired signal paths. Every output can have its own individual input channel combination, or as we call it, submix. Let's move over to output channel 5 and 6, i.e. the auxiliary send, where we have connected the hardware effect. By assigning input channels in the submix mode to the send, we can feed our desired signals into the device. As soon as you move the fader, you'll notice that the return channel on the top receives an input signal, indicating that we successfully created an effects loop. In order to hear the processed signal on your headphones or speakers, go to your control room, select the respective submix and turn up the return channel fader. This setup will give you the utmost freedom in the mixing stage, because you can decide whether or not you would like to record the dry and the wet signal separately or together. One option would be to record all inputs separately into your DAW. In this case, you would have both, the dry and the wet signal recorded and could mix both signals in post. Another way would be to mix both signals in total mix effects. For this, we need to create a loopback channel. I use one of my stereo ADAT channels that is currently unused, in this case ADAT 3 and 4. Now we route both the dry and the wet signal to that particular loopback channel. In this scenario, the channel faders act as the dry-wet control, because by increasing the return channel feed, you add more of the wet signal to the original sound. Instead of recording every channel individually, we select the loopback channel in the DAW and hit record. This method can be applied to all channels in Total Mix FX, which, once you understand the principle, will boost your creativity. Then, no matter what sound source, digital or analog, it can all be processed directly within your RME interface.
I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you want to learn more about our interfaces, watch our other videos on this channel.